Metabolic flexibility is the name of the game when it comes to losing weight and keeping it off. Yes, your favorite diet, may it be keto, may it be, you know, ADF, maybe it, may it be OMAD, have brought you success. But the danger with these diets is not knowing what to do after you lose the weight and come off these diets. In today's video, I want to discuss the importance of being metabolically flexible on your weight loss journey to avoid weight gain or rebound. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Dila Joy and I've lost over 110 pounds on my weight loss journey. My journey has been very difficult. I have dealt with a lot of chronic pain. When I'm in pain, I can't work out. When I can't work out, I can't take care of my mental health. And when I can't take care of my mental health, I resort to binge eating. This happened twice in my life. After giving birth to my son, I ballooned up to 282 pounds. I had injuries that doctors didn't understand. I was in a lot of pain, a lot of pain. And I was depressed for years. Then fast forward to two years ago, I got into a car accident and I had a bunch of chronic pain as well. So after I gave birth to my son, I lost about 60 pounds or so about 70, 80 pounds. And then I was holding steady at around 209 pounds, got into a car accident, and then I ballooned up to 229 pounds. That's when I introduced OMAD one meal a day because I tried to fast, it wasn't working. I find fasting is an effective tool for me at the time because I wasn't very active. I was injured. I was in a lot of pain and fasting was able to help me A, control my binge eating and B, put me in a level where my insulin levels were low and that I was burning fat. Now, when people hear insulin, they think diabetes. No, everyone should be concerned about their insulin levels. I wish there was a way to test your insulin levels like you would do with a continuous glucose monitor. I wish there was a in continuous insulin monitor. That would be great. But I guess the glucose monitor kind of does that because glucose and insulin kind of have a very um, direct relationship. But anyway, let's talk about the importance of metabolic flexibility on your weight loss journey. So it is important to learn how to switch in and out of diets. Of course, you want to be able to be flexible with your approach. So this avoids you putting yourself in a situation that I've been in when I got off of keto, I didn't know what to do, breaked out, where you end up rebounding. So to be metabolically flexible, what does that mean? You have to learn how to lose weight eating carbs. You have to learn how to lose weight without carbs. You have to learn how to lose weight with fasting and you have to know how to lose weight without fasting. Now, when I say that, this is for people who are able to fast. Not everyone's able to fast. This is, I'm talking to my audience. My audience is you. You are the keto goer. You are the faster. I'm talking about you, the people who are able to do these things. You should be metabolically flexible. So you can lose weight with carbs. This is the key with losing weight with carbs. I'd say when you consume your carbs, and this is gonna be for more people who are active, or if you're not active, here are two options. Consume your carbs around your workout. Have your carbs before your workout and have your carbs after your workout. For people who are not working out, have your carbs first thing in the morning. Therefore, that is when you are the most insulin sensitive. So that means you're able to absorb carbs better in a way that it doesn't store it as fat. So you can do it that way. And then throughout the day, have your lean protein or you know your vegetables, your salads, your fruits, etc. Another way you can lose weight with carbs, you can have that piece of bread However, sandwich it with a bunch of low calorie dense foods. Sandwich, sandwich it with, you know, some whole foods, some leafy greens, some avocado. Sandwich it with fat and protein because that's gonna able to keep that insulin response at bay. Fat is powerful on a weight loss journey and so is protein. Some people disagree and say protein's more important. I agree as well. But we're talking about people who have struggled with losing weight due to metabolic impairment. And fat is probably your best friend when it comes to that. Now, keeping this all in mind, you have to be aware of how much you're eating, how you're eating, and so forth. Another way to be metabolically flexible, because Dr. Mindy Pels has talked about this before, she says the ability to go in and out of that state of a fat burner to a sugar burner or a fat burner to a carb burner is key. Right now, I am losing weight with carbs because I wanna preserve my muscle. 
I am looking to work with a coach who is actually a bodybuilder and this coach is very knowledgeable in terms of fasting and insulin levels and all that and this person is a person I met in real life and they've even said what I've talked about on the internet so it's nice to know that there's people who understand the actual science behind the thing but when it comes to muscle you want to be able to um, have carbs and keto can be detrimental to that even though I was able to build muscle while I was losing weight with my keto OMAD diet, I think I would probably contribute genetics to a lot of that, but it's important to be able to do that as well. So if you're losing weight with keto and you are afraid to, afraid to eat carbs, do what I just told you, have your carbs in or around your workout or sandwich your carbs with a bunch of fiber, with a bunch of protein, with a bunch of things that are not going to bring the levels up. And another thing, the insulin levels up. Another thing, when you do that, you're making yourself full. You're making yourself satiated, which is another key to weight loss, is to convince your body that it's full. And you can do that with high fat mixed in with some protein and lots of protein. My breakfast, for example, I'm gonna share with you my breakfast today. It was a bag of cauliflower rice, with a can of tuna and two eggs. That was a substantial amount of protein with lots of fiber and it kept me nice and full. Anyway, I just wanted to reiterate this because I think it's very important for people to be able to vary their fasts, which is another thing, vary your fasts. Don't just do one method of fasting because then you're gonna put yourself in a situation where you're at high risk for relapsing. Do you know that the first year of losing weight, people are at the highest risk of relapsing and regaining all the weight? So I want you guys to learn healthy lifestyle habits. You can incorporate fasting, but vary your fast. You can incorporate keto, but also know how to get off of keto. If you, you know, People might do keto for therapeutic re reasons, for pain management, for arthritis, or what have you. Just know how to vary things. Anyway, I hope this video was helpful. If you made it this far into the video, just drop in the word vary. And I'm sending you guys my love. Take care. Bye.